this video will talk about the review of the statistics. Again, this is the prerequisite of the econometrics course. So you need to know all this information before you go to the linear regression part. In the first part, we will talk about the properties of the estimators. That means whether the estimator is good or bad to the populations. Second, we will talk about the hypothesis testing. Basically, we have three instruments to see whether we can do the hypothesis testing. The first one is called the t-statistics. Second is the p-value. Finally, that is the confidence interval. Lastly, we will talk about the properties of the sample variance. So sample variance is the variance that taken in the sample. So we are, go we are going to see that whether they can be a good estimators in reflecting the population variance. So before I start, why we need to do the estimations? Well, this is because we want to estimate the properties of the populations. So maybe in the population, there are too many peoples, right? right? Maybe one million. So it is hardly for us to get all the data for this one million people. Then we will do some random sampling. Maybe we, we will randomly draw maybe 10,000 of peoples. Then we can get their average. So we use this sample average to estimate the mean of the populations. But whether this estimator is good or bad, it depends on whether the, this estimator has the following three properties. So if the estimator has these three properties, we can say that, okay, this estimator is good. So what are the, what are the three properties? First one is called unbiased. Unbiased means that the expected value of the estimator is equal to the mu of the estimator. Okay, so for example, you have three estimator, y bar, y1, y bar plus one. Whether they are unbiased or not, then you can check, okay. So expected value of y bar, it is just equal to the mu y. So this is unbiased. Expected value of y1. y1 is the first element we draw from the population y. We assume this is iid. That means the expected value is still mu y. So it is still unbiased. How about expected value of y bar plus 1? This is equal to expected value of y bar plus expected value of 1. Then we can see that this is equal to mu y plus 1. This is not equal to mu y. Therefore, this is not a bi not an unbiased estimator. The second element is called consistence. So the definition of consistent is that the probability limit of the estimators will go to the true population mean. So for example, when the sample size becomes bigger and bigger, whether the sample the estimate in the sample is equal to the true population mean. So we have some lemma in calculating whether this is consistent or not. We are going to use the lemma that the variance of the estimator goes to zero as n goes to infinity. So this is one way to cap to see whether this is consistent. The other way to see is to see that whether the estimator is going to the population value. Okay, let's take a look of again y bar y1 and y bar plus 1 okay so the variance of y bar is equal to variance of the y divided by n we can see that when n goes to infinity the whole term becomes zero because everything divided by a very big number is zero so yes this is consistent how about the y1? So the variance of y1 is variance of y. So this does not go to zero. Lastly, the variance of y bar plus 1. So this is equal to the variance of y bar plus the variance of 1 since th this is a constant. So this is exactly equal to the variance of y derived by n. Again, this goes to zero when n goes to infinity. Okay. 
So the last property is called efficient. So the efficient means that okay, if the sample estimator A is more efficient than estimator B, we are saying that the variance of A is smaller than the variance of B. So let's take a look of two estimators. The first one is Y bar. The second one is one half of Y1 plus one half of Y2. Okay. So what is the variance of Y bar? Again, this variance of Y divided by N. Y of the second one. What is the variance of that? So this is equal to first square of the Y1. One fourth times the variance of y plus the second one. One fourth times the variance of y. Still remember, in last video we have mentioned that the variance of a y first you take out the a and square it. Then the remaining is the variance of y. So I take out the one half, then it become one fourth. So we can see that it is equal to variance of y divided by two. So if n is bigger than 2, maybe there are 3 elements, then y bar is more efficient than this 1 half times y1 plus 1 half times y2. So these 3 are the properties of the estimator. If the estimator satisfies these 3, we can say that the estimator is blue. That is called best linear unbiased estimator. Okay, so next we are going to talk about the hypothesis testing. So what is the meaning of hypothesis testing? So hypothesis testing is saying that we are going to draw the sample. We are going to see that whether the sample number is equal to the, equal to some certain value. For example, I draw 1,000 people. We are going to see that the average wage is equal to maybe 10,000 Hong Kong dollar per month. Then we need to set up the null hypothesis to see whether this is true or not. After we set up the null hypothesis, we need to have an alternative hypothesis. It's saying that okay, the expected value is not equal to the what I want. So if after that, we need to collect the data to see whether we can reject the null hypothesis or we cannot reject it. So we have three instruments. The first one is called the T-statistics. So if you want to calculate the T-statistics, you need to remember the formula is equal to Y bar minus mu divided by the standard error of your estimators. So we can see that um, y bar here is your estimator. You collect data to plug in this estimate to estimate this value. So do the standard error of the variance. So what is the standard area standard error of the variance? It is just equal to the sample variance divided by the n and take the square root. Okay. So after you calculate the T statistics, so if your T statistics is greater than some sort of value, you can reject the null hypothesis. So let's take 5% level. In our video, let's take 5% level as our significant level. So if the T statistic is greater than 1.96, the absolute value, so we can say that we can reject the null hypothesis at 5% level. That means null hypothesis is wrong. Okay, so if you want to see that whether the expected salary is equal to some sort of value, then you collect the data to collect the average of the salary of that sample number. Then you minus the mu. Mu is the number you want to state. So maybe it's equal to $10,000. You just plug in 10000 here. Finally, derived by the standard error. Okay, standard error is calculated by the sample variance divided by n and take the square root. After that, you can calculate the value 
if the value is greater than 1.96, you reject it. So the, the step is very simple. So the second one is called the p-value. So p-value is defined as 2 times the probability of the negative t. So if you calculate the t-value, the t-statistics, you, you will put a minus sign here. Then you go to the probability table to see what is the probability of that value. So if p is smaller than 0 0.05, again you can reject the null hypothesis at 5% level. Okay, so in order to calculate the p-value, you need to have some probability table, t-statistic t table. So later we will do some example to see what, how, what you can do to calculate the p-value. Finally is the confidence interval. Confidence interval is defined as the estimator plus or minus 1.96 times the standard error of the y bar. So if you calculate the confidence interval and your stated value is outside this confidence interval, again you can reject the null hypothesis. So this 1.96 is derived by your 5% level. Okay, let's take a look of an example. So now you collect 1,000 individuals, okay, and you can see that their average income is 57557.7, and the sample standard deviation is this 59806.6, and you need to see whether the average of this 1,000 person is equal to 60k, okay. First, you need to set up the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis is the y bar equal to 6,000. Alternative one is the y bar not equal to 6,000. So you have three ways. First one, calculate the t-step. So that's equal to 57557.7 minus 60k derived by the standard error. That is the sample variance derived by the square root of the n, 1000. So you will get the value to be negative 1.29. So here you can see that the absolute value of t, 1.29, is less than 1.96. So we cannot reject. The null hypothesis okay that means the average of the income is not we cannot reject the null hypothesis that the average of income is equal to 60k but can we say that we accept the null hypothesis no because the sample is just randomly drawn from the populations so here we can just say that okay among this 1000 individual there are not enough data to show that their income is equal to, <coughs> is different from the 60k. So we can never say that, okay, we cannot reject it. That means we accept it. No, this is not true. So if you don't want to use the t-statistic, you can further calculate the p-value. So the p-value is 2 times the probability of the minus t-statistics. That is equal to 2 times the probability, negative 1.29. So what is the probability of 1.29? So you need to have some prob probability table like this. So negative 1.29, that is negative 1.2 with the 2.9 here. So this is 0 0.0985. So 2 times 0 0.0985. So you can get that a p value is equal to 0 0.197. This is greater than 0 0.05. Again, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. So all these three elements should draw the three same conclusions. So finally, the confidence interval should be the y bar plus or minus 1.96 times the standard error. That is the standard deviation. divided by the, the square root of n. So this is equal to 
53850N61264. Okay, since the mu lies in the disk interval, again we cannot reject the null hypothesis. So all these three instruments generate the same result. Okay. So we have taken a look of the estimate of the mu and we need to use the sample variance to estimate the population variance. So what are the properties of the sample variance? Okay. So we use the y bar to estimate the mu y and we use sample variance to estimate the population variance. And the population variance has the form like the y1 minus the average square is then divided by the n. How about the sample variance? So you will think that, oh, this is similar, right? y1 minus the sample average, think the square divided by n. But this is not. So you need to know that the sample variance has the form sum of yi minus y bar to the square divided by n minus 1. So why we need to derive the by n minus one rather than n minus rather than n, right? Because in this case, this sample variance is both unbiased and consistent. So I'm going to prove that why they are unbiased and consistent. Okay, first to prove they are unbiased. Before you you are going to prove that it is unbiased, you need to know two facts. First one is expected value of y i and y bar. No 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 expected value of y i minus y bar square is equal to the variance of y i minus two covariance of y i and y bar plus variance of y bar okay so this is not e not difficult to prove but let's do it together so the first step i do the plus and minus properties so i do this y i minus the mean of y then minus y bar again we minus the mean of y so both reduced by the expected value of y they keep the same result then don't forget put a square term here after that do the quadratic expansion this term square is minus two times this term and second terms lastly square of the last term so this is equal to expected value of yi minus ey whole term square minus 2yi minus ey y bar minus ey finally plus y bar minus ey whole term square so you can see that first term is the variance of yi second term is two times the covariance of yi and y bar finally is the variance of y bar okay this is the first fact the second fact is the covariance of y bar and yi is equal to the variance of y divided by n so this is um this is more difficult to prove, but again, let's do it together. The covariance of y bar and y i. So by the definition, this is equal to y bar minus e y, y i minus e y. Then let's do some expansion. So this is equal to sum of j from 1 to n yj divided by n so I just expand the sample variance 
give it this and we keep the remaining then we further put the expected value to the numerator So we can do this because we divided by n here and we share this sigma term at the numerator. So this is equal to n e y divided by n. So I get this just e y. So the second term I keep the same. Then we take out this n out of the expected value. We will get 1 minus n expected value of Y I minus E Y the whole time square plus the sum from J not equal to I expect a value of Y J minus E Y Okay, so this step I just separate that y run y1 up to y i and I just take out the yj here. So at the end, the first term, this is equal to variance of y. And the second term, this is the covariance of yj and yi <coughs> so since they are id so the covariance is equal to zero so what you will get is the variance of y divided by n okay with these two facts we can do the conclusion whether they are unbiased So now you have two facts. Expect a value of yi minus y bar squared equal to variance of yi minus two covariance of yi and y bar plus the variance of y bar. Second, the covariance of y bar and yi equal to variance of y divided by n. Okay. With these two facts, we can see the expected value of the sample variance. So this is equal to expected value. I just replace the definition of sample variance. So these are the definition of sample variance. I put an expected value here. So this term can be taken out. What is remaining is expected value of y i minus y bar squared, right? So this is equal to I keep the first term. So what is this? This is expected value of y i minus y bar. This is equal to variance of this certain kind of things. So this is keep the summation and rewrite it as variance of y i minus two covariance of y i and y bar plus variance of y bar okay then we can see something interesting so this is variance of y squared minus two covariance of y i and y bar covariance of y i and y bar is equal to variance of y divided by n so this is equal to two times the variance of y divided by n plus finally variance of y divided by n so we can see okay this is equal to n minus 2 plus 1 divided by n so the numerator is exactly equal to 
and minus one. Okay. Then you can see that oh, this a minus one and this n minus one can be cancel each other. So what is remains is sum of variance y divided by n. Since there are n number of variance of y, so these two are getting cancelled. What is remaining is variance of y. So this is the definition of unbiased. If the expected value of a set called variance is equal to the population variance. So unbiased. How about consistent? For consistent, we need to show that whether when n becomes greater, greater and greater, whether the sample variance goes to the population variance. So again, the sample variance has the form like this. So first, I will write y i minus y bar to be y i minus e y minus y bar minus e y. So we have do this before. I I just minus the expected value for two elements. Next, expand the quadratic equation. I will write this expand expression into the formula of the sample variance. I will get so the sample variance is equal to one divided by n minus one times the first term y i minus e y squared minus the second term. Next, this is equal to so I multiply n here, then divide by n at the same time. Divide and multiply y i minus e y square. So this is the first term, and the second term it become n divided by n minus one times y bar minus mu y. So mu y just expect a value of y. Why we can get this? Because of the definition of the sum of y i minus e y is just equal to n times y bar minus mu y. So by collect collecting the terms, we can draw these conclusions. So I just for simplicity, I don't write it here. So okay so given this expansion so we can see that when n become larger and larger this term become one and secondly this is equal to variance of y square so we can get the result how about the second part so we can see that when n becomes greater and greater, y bar minus mu y is equal to zero, goes to zero. Since y bar goes to mu y as n goes to infinity. So the second term here can be cancelled. So we can see that, okay, when n goes to bigger and bigger, sample variance goes to be equal to the population variance. So this proves that
they are consistent.